Good morning, or should I say good afternoon? It's about two o'clock in the afternoon on this beautiful rainy Monday. And I am going to do my first soap making video. So this is Melissa with Melissa's Girly Things. Can't forget to tell you that. Today I am making shampoo bars. And I know a lot of people are using their bath bomb press, they're making some shampoo bars, they're putting some kind of dry ingredients in it. Um, and most, I believe, most soap makers are saying, okay, we're not putting sulfates in, but quite a few are using some, still some kind of heavy detergent, which could strip out your hair if you're not careful. So um, several people out at the Palsbo Farmers Market here in Palsbo, Washington have asked me to make shampoo bars that have none of these heavy detergents. They're saying we just want a nice soap that is made for hair. So today I am going to make two batches. I'm actually going to mix them all together in one batch and then split them into two. I'm going to add some uh, men's fragrance and some women's fragrance. So I've got two different batches there. Um, and I'm doing, it is really just soap, just with some nicer ingredients. I have melted down um, some coconut oil and added some olive oil. I've got it all measured out. And this is a really big bucket. Unfortunately, the buckets that I use will not hold an eight pound batch. And that's what I'm doing today is an eight pound batch. So I've got about four pounds of oils right here. Well, a little over four pounds of oils, I guess. But this is my coconut and olive oil. And these are going into this really huge bucket here. And I have used this really huge bucket for um, big, big batches, you know, like 12 pounds. Um, and, and it works really well because I use the drill for that instead of my stick blender. Um, it's 12 pounds is a little too much for a stick blender, at least for mine. Um, it just takes too long that way for me. I'm very impatient. Now to the coconut oil and olive oil, um, I am going to go ahead and add my lye water, which is still quite warm, but, um, I'm going to add it anyway because the truth is I have an hour and a half before I have to get ready to go to my J-O-B. So, here we go. We've got the lye water right here. Now, let me tell you, I got this pitcher at Walmart and it was like 88 cents or something like that. And uh, it works really well for me. Now, I have discounted my water by 30% because... I don't want it to take quite as long to dry once it's saponified. Just get all of that lye water goodness. And I'm going to go ahead and start blending it now because what I would like to see happen, and, and I don't know if there is any science behind this at all, but I would like that lye to take more of the coconut and olive and a little bit less of the castor oil, avocado oil, shea butter, and argan oil that I'm going to add to it. Because I want these really good oils to be available for your hair, right? So I've got that in there, and I know this is just really far down in there, um, but I am gonna go ahead and start blending on low. I apologize for the loudness thereof. We're just gonna get it started stick blending that and it looks like I must have had a little bit of soap on the inside of my blade because as soon as I started blending that little bits of my previous uh, coffee soap started coming up and that is not going to harm anything whatsoever Actually, now that I think about it, it was an unscented soap that I had done with just some colorants in it. Last soap I made was um, for some embeds for a soap that I'll be making tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. Maybe day after tomorrow. Which is also going to have its water discounted because it's an autumn soap and here we are. Um, 
I believe today is the autumn equinox and then tomorrow will be the first full day of autumn, I believe. So we've got that uh, to emulsion anyway. And now we're going to go ahead and add in, let me take this out so it doesn't get all oily. Now we're gonna add in the really good oils. I melted down the shea butter and all the rest of my oils are liquid. So we've got the argan oil, the castor oil, and the avocado oil going in. And that argan oil, if you've never used it, it's, it's a pretty thick oil. I was surprised at how thick it was the first time I used it. Um, I put some argan oil in my beard balm as well. And uh, so you really kind of really have to scrape this out to get it all out. It's almost the consistency of warm honey. And uh, get all of that out. Scrape it out really well. You know, I was never really that good at scraping until I started watching Katie over at Royalty Soaps. And you guys really need to go check her out. Um, she is a true artist. She is a soap artist and she makes some amazing soaps. She mixes up some of her own fragrances. She mixes up her own colorants. Um, uh, well, customizes her colorants from, from other micas that she buys. Um, she's just really, really fantastic. I so much enjoy watching her. She's a young woman. She started out as a teenager with her own business and she has grown her business and uh, you know, you look at how many followers she has. She sells out of her soaps every month, so her website isn't even up for very long. But, you know, she keeps everything handmade, small batches, great quality product. And so definitely go visit Katie over there at Royalty Soaps. And, and you can find her on YouTube, you can find her on Facebook, and you can find her on Instagram. So, um, I will try to leave a link for her or her hashtag or whatever it is. I, I'm still new to that whole Instagram thing. So now we have got that to trace. We've got a nice medium trace going on there. And I am going to scrape off the stick blender and get as much off of there as I can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour this back into smaller buckets um, now that I've got it all blended up. I just can't blend it. I, I didn't want to make two separate batches, you know. I just don't have time for that when I have to go to work. And let's go ahead and unplug this. We're going to take this and set it off to the side. And there we go. Now, we're going to go ahead and pour this back in to these two. Oop, that didn't get scraped out very well. And that's okay because we can just hand blend it back in. There we go. Ooh, this is already getting pretty solid. There is not going to be anything fancy happening with these. They're shampoo bars anyway. I mean, their whole point is to just get in there and wash your hair. So, not a whole lot of coloring going to go into here. Um, just because, I don't know, I, I know that my shampoo, until I started using my own soap to wash my hair, my shampoo was pink and it didn't turn my hair pink. But, I don't know, I kind of wanted lighter colors. They're both going to be green because the fragrances I'm using, the men's fragrance is Green Irish from Nature's Garden. And the woman's fragrance I'm going to be using is um, Cucumber and Melons, also from Nature's Garden. And so one of them is going to have Green Vibrance Mica. The other one is going to have Alpine Green. Both of those from uh, Nurture Soap Supply. So I am scraping my giant bucket out because I don't want to lose any of this soap. And I don't know, if stuff takes too long, I will absolutely try to learn how to cut it out of my videos. But there we go. 
And when I get this into the actual molds, I'm going to have to just really whack it in there, I think, because that is really thick. Look at that. I can already almost sculpt it. And doing pretty good here. Almost done. And you know, I don't remember. I've used both of these fragrance oils before in just a regular soap, and I do not remember if they slow down trays, if they accelerate, I have no clue. So what I'm going to do, and normally we would do this with a stick blender, but because I'm already so thick, I am going to pop the green vibrance into this one. And you know, Last time I had a soap get really thick like this while I was still trying to pour it into a container, I was using um, palm oil and I thought, well, it must have something to do with the palm oil. Apparently not necessarily. So, all right, and this is the Alpine Green going into here. And these were just mixed with a tiny bit of the, um, the good oils, the nice oils that I've added into here, um, just like a tablespoon of each one. Actually, I know it looks like more, but it's really not. It was only about a tablespoon of each one. Um, and because I had set this up for a 10% um, lie discount, I feel like we're just, we're okay if I lose a couple drops of the oils still in those cups. Now, there we go. Got it most of the way mixed up. And that's going to be okay with me. It's too thick to do any kind of a swirl intentionally, but I don't have to necessarily, you know, totally mix them, blend them up, whatever. I'm just going to get another spatula. And I don't know if you can see, I actually have paper down on my table. Um, because I do work outside, I cover my workspace. Oh, look at that, that's really thick. I cover my workspace with plastic, then I have to uncover it and wash it, and then, I don't know, just to help keep it clean and make that whole process a little bit easier, then I cover it with um, just a piece of poster board. The art teacher at the high school where I work threw out just tons and tons of this poster board, and I said, you know, why let it go to waste? I really hate wasting anything, and I guess when you try to work, you know, in this industry with small batches and... Um, handmade, little waste, you also try to reduce, reuse, and recycle, right? So we're going to call this about four pounds. I want to put then two ounces, half an ounce per pound of oils, two ounces or one quarter cup of fragrance oil. And this is, uh-oh, I don't remember which one was which. Aha. This one has the Alpine Green. Boy, that's such a pretty color. And stir that in. Boy, that is just a wonderful, wonderful smell. It smells a little bit like that Irish soap, you know, Irish Spring. Which, by the way, if you go to the store and buy soap, that is one of the few real soaps that's out there on the, your store shelves. Um, Irish Spring is, so um, they're not all bad. It is very drying though. I think it has uh, a lot of coconut oil in it or something. And too much coconut oil can be drying. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the cucumber and melons. And fragrance oil, if you have the wrong kind of plastic, fragrance oil will um, kind of melt it. So I just, I use glass when I'm measuring out my fragrance oils. That's one ounce and two ounces. Okay. And I sure hope you can see this. And I'm stirring up the second one. 
And again, this one is cucumber and melons. You can see it right there from Nature's Garden. At least I hope you can, because I can't see the other side of my phone and I don't have anyone to help me. So there we go. We've got this all stirred in by hand. They're almost the same color, but they are very lightly colored. Again, I don't like to go just really crazy with my colorants anyway. Uh, I have a few very, very vibrantly colored soaps. Not a lot though. And now I'm going to bring over the molds. Now I have these molds that I got from Amazon and I bought four from my brother and they had no box. And then I got these two with the boxes from Amazon. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two in these molds. And by the way, this bucket that I have in my hand, um, we eat a lot of ice cream. <laughs> And they're actually ice cream buckets that I, I reuse these an awful lot. Oh, I have really made a huge massive mess here. Because this is so thick, I have to kind of spoon it in. I'll clean it up though, before I just let it go sitting. Oh, boy, look at that. But here I go, just spooning it in because that is so darn thick. I think a 30% water discount might have been a little too much. But again, once it saponifies, I don't want to spend six weeks trying to get it to dry. So um, we don't have a dehumidifier in the room where I dry my soaps. Um, that's, that's one compromise my husband and I had to make. He won't let the lye be worked with in the house. Uh, but I told him, I said, you know, my soap can't live in the uh, outside. It just can't. It will melt. <laughs> um, with all the rain that we get, uh, even if I were to have this area completely enclosed, it's just too wet outside to have my soaps out here. So they get to go in my parlor to dry. And... Uh, Someone said something about a she shed the other day, and I thought, well, that's really funny. I don't have a shed. I actually have a room in our basement. It's a finished room and um, has a fireplace and a couple of 1980s uh, wingback chairs, you know, the, the kind of pseudo wannabe Victorian, which the truth is I absolutely love anything Victorian. Uh, although I'm, I'm learning a lot about, you know, like how they process their food. They they wanted their wheat, their breads to be super, super white. So they would actually adulterate their, their flour with, um, oh, uh, plaster of Paris and uh, all kinds of other stuff that would, would kill a person. I mean you'd die of malnutrition if that's what you were trying to live on. And then you'd get like, you know, really bad tummy trouble and, and all of that. So let's go ahead and just kind of make a little swirly do on the top and go ahead and bang this down. Sorry for the noise guys. I suppose I could have done that somewhere else. Couldn't I? And I think I'm going to, I don't know, try to just kind of drizzle this over a little bit. Just a little bit of mica on the top. And again. There we go. And they're not even, but that is okay. this over here and now here's for the molds I did not have boxes for I actually made little boxes out of cardboard um, you know my husband could actually make me boxes but you know, he and I both work full-time and it's just <sighs> we don't get a whole lot of time for anything and so we're gonna go ahead and just do the same thing here 
And if this gets really long and boring, I will go ahead and cut some of it out. But boy, this one's actually, I don't know why, maybe because it's so thick. It's even thicker now. Um, it's getting to be a little bit easier to work with and not quite so sloppy. Of course, it could just be that I didn't even try to pour. I don't know. And just kind of. Uh oh, I got soap better on my arm. I am wearing um, safety goggles because, you know, people say, oh, I, I've heard so many people say, well, I don't need goggles because I'm careful. And it's like, you know, you don't need those safety goggles until the one time you do. So um, you, you never know it's why it's called an accident. You don't know what's going to happen. So if you're out there and you're making soap and if you're brand new at it, let me tell you, you must use safety goggles. You absolutely must. If you wear eyeglasses, they've got some that fit over your eyeglasses. I, I wear bifocals, so I totally understand that, that it, it's kind of hard. Um, the ones I have have little uh, air holes over on the side so they don't fog up as badly. I know that's really inconvenient trying to work with gloves and goggles and all that, but it's so, so important. And if you are an experienced soaper and you know, you think, oh, well, you know, I'm just so good at this. I never make a mess. I never splash. Nothing bad ever happens. Well, I'll tell you, nothing bad ever happens until the one time that it does. So please wear your safety goggles if you're doing this. Um, and just like I said, the reminder was I got a little bit of soap batter on my arm and it started to sting a little bit. And uh, my arm is a lot tougher than my eyeballs. All right, scraping this last little bit out. I guess I didn't have them quite even, did I? Let's go ahead and use our finger for this. Look at that. It's so thick. But a lot less water to try to um, dry out of there. Oh, yep, that's not even. A little bit over here. And you know, I suppose to see how close they are to even, I could weigh them because the boxes are the same size. And the molds are the same size. So I will just get out my little digital scale. There's a little bit of soap left in there. Okay, zero it out. And we got 3.02 ounces there, or 3.02 pounds, I mean. Uh, three pounds, 2.4 ounces. So we're going to go ahead and put that last tiny little bit of scrapings into this one because it's a little bit lighter. There we go. Normally I don't weigh the soaps like this and I have been wearing these goggles long enough that I am starting to have a hard time seeing. But the second I bang this on the table and soap splashes up into my eye, I'll be like, oh, I kind of regret taking it off. So, there we go. Go ahead and take this. And try to get a little bit more of this mica out. And we're going to go ahead and just do this and make a little bit of a kind of a design on the top. And it's not going to be anything fancy, like I said. I just. And then the same thing for this one. So these molds are great um, for what they are. They're just a silicone mold. They're cheap. If you're just getting started out, they will hold a two pound batch of soap with its full amount of water in it. 
Um, so, you know, they're, they're good if you're going to, you know, just make personal use soap, if you're trying out a new recipe. Um, they're cheap. Like, I think I've mentioned that. So, uh, great for starting out. And I, this, I am just starting out. This is my first year. Um, I started my business in January and this today is, uh, September 22nd, I think. Um, I think. Anyway, there we go. Now we have the cucumber and melons is done. And I am going to take these inside, put them on my um, drying rack. They're going to cure for about 18 hours. I will take them out of the molds and I will cut them tomorrow. So thank you very much and have a great day. And I will see you when I cut this soap. Bye.